A Stirling type engine has a couple of unique features designed to maximize the efficiency of its heat cycle. Here we examine those features and their application. The main cylinder houses two different pistons moving in distinct phases. The displacer piston moves the working fluid between hot and cold sections of the cylinder, while the power piston periodically expands and compresses the working fluid. A key feature of most Stirling engines is a set of heat exchangers, which store heat in an intermediate position as the working fluid moves from hot to cold, and deliver heat to the working fluid as it moves from cold to hot. The two-piston system is connected to a set of flywheels, which convert the heat cycle into rotary motion. If heat is applied to the top of the cylinder, the necessary temperature gradient is created. As the heat cycle proceeds, we can map the cycling of the working fluid in pressure volume space. The dot in the PV loop maps the conditions of the working fluid through each cycle. Note that the area enclosed by this loop is the total energy delivered to the flywheels per cycle. If we slow things down, it is easier to see the parts of the engine affecting working fluid pressure and volume. Let's pause at a few key places. Here the power piston is in its bottom position, giving the working fluid its maximum volume. Note that because of the position of the displacer piston, most of the working fluid is still in the hot part of the cylinder. Here, the pressure has reached a minimum as working fluid is moved to the cold part of the piston, but volume remains relatively high. As the power piston moves to its top position and volume is minimized, working fluid is pushed back into the hot part of the cylinder, further maximizing pressure. The combination of a displacer piston and the heat exchangers helps to significantly reduce heat loss in each cycle. As with other external heat engines, the trade-off is that engine power tends to be low.